Hey everybody, it's Lo and welcome back to my channel, Lo Without Limits. In this video, I'm going to talk all about xenoestrogens, so if you want to see that, then just keep watching. The topic of xenoestrogens is something that I've always been interested in, especially as somebody who has dealt with problems relating to estrogen dominance, and I feel like it's something that isn't discussed enough. Before I jump into xenoestrogens and the problems that they're causing, I just want to talk about estrogen in general and what can happen if there's too much or not enough in our bodies. So everybody, males and females, need a healthy level of estrogen, even though it is the female hormone. Males have it too, the same way that females have testosterone even though it's the male hormone. Having a healthy balance of all of them is super important. For women, having a healthy level of estrogen helps us develop into women to have the reproductive organs develop and function properly as well as the characteristics that women have such as breasts and hips. It also helps maintain good cognitive health, serotonin production, heart health, and a healthy menstrual cycle. So for women, if your estrogen is either too high or too low, that will cause problems with your menstrual menstrual cycle. So if you are having constant problems, checking out your hormones is definitely something that you should look into. When women are experiencing low estrogen, which many do, especially post-menopause, they will experience obesity, osteoporosis, and cardiovascular health risks, which is why a lot of women do begin taking external estrogen supplements after menopause in order to help balance out their hormones and help keep their body functioning longer. High estrogen in women will lead to weight change, typically weight gain either through insulin resistance since estrogen and insulin are closely related or through thyroid dysfunction. It also leads to a higher risk of blood clots, stroke, PMS, and just mood disorders, anxiety, depression, fibrocystic changes in breast tissue as well as breast, tender, breast tenderness and swelling. Turns out that's a hard phrase to say. Hair loss, mood swings, memory problems. A higher level of estrogen is also correlated with higher increased risk of breast cancer and ovarian cancer. And this is also seen in men with an increased risk of prostate cancer since estrogen and cell duplication and cells growing, especially cancer cells, are two things that are closely connected and have been proven over and over again in different studies. In men, a healthy level equals a healthy libido, proper erectile function, and proper sperm development. Low levels in men can lead to decreased sex drive, loss of bone mass, and some belly fat. And when men experience higher than normal levels of estrogen, they can also experience weight gain and they can also experience something called gynecomastia, which is the medical term for man boobs. It can also lead to a lower sex drive in men and they won't produce as much sperm and the sperm that they do produce won't be as healthy, which is something that is being tied to the increased risk of infertility in both men and women. Men with higher estrogen levels will also experience an increased anger and frustration, something which was commonly always tied to testosterone and like the male hormone and being angry, but there's actually been a recent mice study where they compared the temperament of mice that had higher estrogen and mice that had higher testosterone to see who is more angry and it's actually the mice with the higher estrogen that showed more signs of aggressiveness and territorial behaviors and in my opinion that kind of makes sense since the moms were always the more territorial ones of their area and their offspring and their den and their young so it does kind of check out that the mice with the higher estrogen would be a bit more territorial higher estrogen in men can also lead to insomnia depression, anxiety, increased risk of heart conditions, and again, prostate issues, including an increased risk of prostate cancer. When estrogen is high, that also means that testosterone might be lowered. In fact, there are studies showing that as each generation progresses, the level of testosterone is actually going down. So each generation, this is definitely depleting, and it could be because of the amount of xenoestrogens and toxins that are in our environment and that we're more exposed to in comparison to previous generations. And this is also tied into microplastics, which I will get into plastics and their connection with xenoestrogens in a minute. But microplastics have actually been shown to be in the womb of developing babies as fetuses. We are now being exposed to these xenoestrogens and microplastics and toxins before we're even out in the world. So based off of all that, no matter what our physiology is, we should all want our estrogen to be at healthy levels, which is be 
becoming increasingly difficult as xenoestrogens are making their way into our bodies just because of the modern society that we lived in. Now going back to xenoestrogens, these are compounds that are chemically similar to the hormone estrogen. Once they're in our body, our body receives them the same way even though they are often synthetic compounds and they bind to our estrogen receptors so our body thinks, oh, there's a lot of estrogen here and will react as if there is higher levels of estrogen leading to all of those symptoms that I previously listed. Under the umbrella of xenoestrogens, there are phytoestrogens, which are natural compounds that mimic estrogen, and these are often found in products such as soy. So if you have a lot of soy-based products, you will be getting a lot of these phytoestrogens in and may have similar problems, but their effect isn't as strong as the synthetic xenoestrogens, which are the main problem that we're dealing with. And because these are also coming into your body, usually with protein and fiber and different vitamins and nutrients, coming in with that whole package, those aren't the main source of concern that we are dealing with in comparison to the synthetic ones, which are becoming so much more common and are what our bodies have not adapted to or have evolved to since they are relatively new compounds in the grand scheme of human development and evolution. It's also important to note that problems from xenoestrogens won't impact your body right away. It's not like eating a bad piece of chicken and you could immediately have food poisoning. This is something that's slowly happening and over time bioaccumulates. So these compounds don't biodegrade, especially since a lot of them are synthetic compounds that our body can't break down and completely get rid of sometimes. And they like to be stored in our fat cells where they'll just kind of build up in there. So they won't biodegrade, they'll just bioaccumulate. So it could be 10 years from now where all of the effects from living among plastic and doing all of these things where xenoestrogens are heavily found can catch up to you and because it's so much later you won't know what the direct source was which is why taking steps to reduce it now and figure out where they are now is super important. The bioaccumulation of these xenoestrogens is also causing an impact because again they will stay in our cells which does affect our DNA and can get passed down through epigenetics. It's actually changing the DNA of the parents so as we move forward in our society and as generations come along their bodies are reprogrammed and predestined to have the symptoms of estrogen dominance and experience higher estrogen just because of the epigenetics that our body is changing to in reaction to the world around us. So now that we know the risks of xenoestrogens, where do they come from? These are again synthetic chemical compounds that are often found in household products, personal care products, and in what we eat and drink. They are everywhere. One of the biggest culprits is plastic. Yes, the thing destroying our earth is also destroying us. We are exposed to this through food containers, water bottles, disposable cups, and plastic wrap. Most of this is because of the BPA, BPS, and phthalates that make oil into the plastic that we know and hate. These toxins make it out of the plastic and into our food and drinks by just being wrapped there for too long, by microwaving your food in plastic, and by leaving your water bottles out in cars. So heat actually makes this happen faster, which is also why microwaving your food in plastic is not too good. Phthalates are the things that make plastic soft and bendy and can be found in vinyl flooring, toys, plastic gloves, and plastic food wrap like saran wrap and can also be found in anything with the label fragrance since that's just kind of a very broad term. A lot of stuff that says fragrance if it's not like a clean company or a place that specifies that they're not using phthalates or any toxic substances or that their fragrance is coming from an essential oil or something like that typically is just a broad list of things that give something a synthetic fragrance. There's no law or rule that says that all of these ingredients and all of these chemical compounds have to be listed. A big source of synthetic fragrances with phthalates are candles. So this one's actually a good one. It's from Patty Wax. But if you want to see a video that I did about a year ago on clean candles and just seeing how toxic they are from the paraffin wax to the different fragrances being used, I'll have that video linked down below where I use my Dyson to just track the candles as they're burning and 
It's a very interesting study. Another huge contributor is household cleaning products full of these toxic chemicals that can be xenoestrogens. If you want to find out more about these specific products that you have or look up a product before you go and buy, I highly recommend checking out the Think Dirty app. You can go on and search all kinds of either beauty products and household cleaning products and even scan the barcode when you're at the store to see what's in it. So you can scan any barcode and all of the ingredients will come up with a score and the product will have an overall score all together. And on the ingredients there are green ones that don't have any toxicity problems and then up to red ones which are kind of like stay away from these. And you can even tap on each ingredient to see like a list of studies as to why it's either fine for you based on these studies or why you should stay away. So that's definitely a really good app to make it easy. I just love using Branch Basics. It gets the job done and it's clean. It has number one score on the Think Dirty app. I definitely recommend that app to just see what's in everything that you have underneath your sink. Personal care products and cosmetics are another big contributor, especially since these are things that you're either putting directly onto your skin, which gets absorbed into your skin, into your bloodstream, or even into your mouth, such as your toothpaste and mouthwash. Some common chemicals that are xenoestrogens are triclosan, which is a common ingredient in toothpaste, mouthwash, hand sanitizers, and other parabens are found in your makeup, your skincare, your perfume, your shampoo, conditioner, lotions, and again, anything with the term fragrance that doesn't specify where it comes from. Sunscreens are also a major source of xenoestrogens, especially if they have benzophenone, for menthol benzolide, or oxybenzone. Basically anything with a benz or a phen should probably stay away from. I'll have another video linked down below where I talk about different non-toxic swaps in terms of personal care products and house products and everything. The first one that I talk about in that is sunscreen. Oxybenzone is also not great for coral reefs and in terms of its estrogenic effects, there have actually been studies proving that it does mimic estrogen in your body. It's being banned places, but a lot of it is still on the shelf, so you just need to take action when buying these things. Another big source of xenoestrogens are pesticides, which shouldn't come as too big of a surprise considering how bad pesticides are for our gut health and just in every other ways. But one of the most common pesticides that is a xenoestrogen is atrazine. This is the second most common common pesticide used in the US behind glyphosate, aka Roundup. And this one in particular is commonly sprayed on grains such as corn and wheat. And actually in October 2003, the EPA reviewed atrazinine for its toxicity and approved it for its continued use. In that same year, the same month, the European Union banned it because of its toxicity and that it was contaminating water. Just more reason why we need to do our own research and take action to our own hands. Other people won't do it for us. In fact, even with other chemicals that are commonly found in our skincare and makeup and all that, a lot of them are approved for use in the US but are banned in the EU. So it's just a little weird that there are things that we can just buy willy-nilly and put onto our skin, our biggest organ, and like every other country in the world is like, maybe you shouldn't do that. Speaking of water, tap water is another big source of xenoestrogens. This is especially true if you live in an area which has a higher level of PUFAS, which you can find out by going onto a website and putting in your zip code, and it will let you know where your water comes from, and because they do regular testing, it'll show you what levels of chemicals and different toxins are in your water, and there is a minimum level that everything can meet, like as long as it doesn't go above the maximum, but the minimum should be zero, but you can go online and find out how much of each of these things is in your tap water. Another source of xenoestrogens in tap water is from microplastics, and again, they're micro, so we can't see them, yet we are consuming five grams of microplastics every single week. I feel like I say this in nearly all of my videos around either health or sustainability because it's just such a crazy fact that we're eating a credit card's worth of plastic in our food and from our water every single week, which is crazy. And again, these will just bioaccumulate and release toxins in our body. Tap water also does go through a huge cleaning process before making it to your tap. So a lot of this does include chlorine in order to clean it up and have it okay for general household use. So by having a good filter, the dream is to have a house 
with some fancy reverse osmosis filter but for right now just using any filter is good enough of course there will always be some things that make it through but it's better than drinking directly from the tap so that is a lot of stuff that we use in our everyday lives and cannot avoid and you might be freaking out wondering how can i avoid all these xenoestrogens a good place to start is by opening up all your cabinets looking at your products and learning what is on the label and if there are no ingredients on the label since there's no law specifying that there has to be then going to different apps or just doing your research online this includes your cleaning cabinet and your skin care your hair care your just personal body care your shampoo conditioner and thankfully in today's age there are so many companies that are making it easy to buy clean non-toxic things and they're also making it super easy to let you know that it's clean and non-toxic with the labeling and as more companies are doing this it is becoming more accessible for everybody but of course all of these things are still out there so you definitely need to do a little bit more research find what's out there and see what works but again there are so many places to find all of these things now if you want like a one-stop shop for makeup and skincare I've personally never used it but Credo Beauty is a really good place to find everything that is clean and non-toxic on that site ditching as much plastic as you can it's hard to do because sometimes you'll buy food or you'll go and get takeout or you'll bring leftovers home from dinner and it will come in a plastic container but just to not microwave it in that plastic switch it over to a glass container and in your home where you do have more control switching over to glass and stainless steel or aluminum and using as little plastic especially single-use plastic as you can shameless plug for my small biz rain reusables and while it is hard to avoid always the one thing you should 100% always avoid because it's literally the worst is styrofoam. It can't be recycled. It's the most toxic. It's just gross. We don't like styrofoam. Styrofoam bad. Chick-fil-A, get rid of the styrofoam. And if you do need to use a water bottle, make sure it hasn't been just out forever or in the heat or the water bottle that's been in the back of your car for a couple of weeks because that makes more toxins leach into your drink and into your food. Again, don't microwave your plastic. And all of this also goes for your cookware. So a lot of nonstick cookware has Teflon, which is a big contributor to PUFAs that end up in our water. And nonstick also just, it gets a little sticky after a while. So it's not even really worth it using cast iron or stainless steel we've personally been using the carbon steel from made in and absolutely love it but just staying away from non-stick and finding a good pan and just seasoning it and there are again so many more options available nowadays also avoid using chemical pesticides and herbicides in your home lawn or garden and when possible buy organic I know it gets super expensive I typically will buy a lot of organic when it's available for cheaper on imperfect foods or if it's one of those things where I'm gonna eat the skin like berries. Trying to buy and support organic and local as much as possible in order to reduce your exposure to those toxins. You can also reduce the amount of microplastics that are making it into the world. That way we don't end up eating two credit cards worth of plastic every single week. Washing your clothes properly, avoiding synthetic fabrics when possible and when you are washing those fabrics using a guppy friend i have so many videos that i'll have linked down below I actually think it's just like two videos on synthetic clothing plastic free clothing how to take care of all these things very passionate on the subject so i'm not going to go into it here do go into it on those videos if you want to check them out i will have both of them linked down below so overall a lot of those things aren't super hard to do they're really easy lifestyle changes that you can make and the most important thing is educating yourself and getting this information which you're doing right now so good job and also sharing this information and letting other people know like hey maybe don't microwave your stuff in plastic drink from filter water Water. don't use plastic water bottles so by spreading this information we can all make a difference together if you heard all of those high estrogen symptoms that I listed off at the beginning and you were thinking that's me here are a few tips to balance it out so we can all have a healthy level of our happy hormones drinking water and exercising will help our body flush it out and get rid of all these excess xenoestrogens and since xenoestrogens love to hide in our fat cells with the other toxins maintaining a healthy weight will actually help reduce the amount that we're storing in our body and this is actually 
true for all toxins. They love just hanging out in our fat cells. So if you've ever like lost weight and you felt really bad while doing it, it might be because as you're getting rid of that, you're actually flushing all these toxins. So you have to like leave those fat cells that you're killing off. Your body has to fight off a lot more. Your liver has to work a lot harder. So just know that like if you do feel a little cruddy while burning off this fat and getting rid of it, it could be because your body is just also trying to dump a lot of the toxins that have been hiding in there. Your liver is also your main detox organ, so it helps you just push everything out. And if you do have excess hormones, it helps you get rid of all of that. So by supporting it, by eating good, whole, unprocessed foods, which will also help you not have any insulin spikes from these sugar and carbs, and will allow your liver to keep running good and functioning properly and detoxing all all of that and then also again drinking a lot of water to help flush all of that out and just supporting your liver and also eating good cruciferous foods will help your liver and support it in its detoxification process. I hope you like this video and learned something new and got a few good takeaway tips. If you did be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below how you're reducing your toxin exposure and what else you want to see here on my channel and while you're there be sure to subscribe. I upload a new video every Wednesday. So until the next one, thanks for watching.